Sometimes these things happen in MMA. What's going on, fight fans? Welcome to These Things Happen in MMA. The goal of this channel is to highlight crazy and spectacular moments that have made mixed martial arts into what it is today. Don't forget to follow the channel on social media, and the link to my merch shop is in the description below. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the growth of women's mixed martial arts and how it evolved over time. This is the story of the evolution of women's MMA. The beginning of women in modern mixed martial arts dates back to July 18, 1995, and what would be the first ever women's MMA tournament? The event was titled the Ultimate L1 Challenge, run by Japanese promotion Ladies Legends Pro Wrestling. Russian Olympic judoka Svetlana Gorenko competed in the event and is considered by many to be the first women's MMA fighter of importance. Standing at 6'3 and weighing 330 pounds, she had a tremendous physical advantage over her opponents. Gorenko would go on to win the tournament, defeating three opponents in one night, becoming the first woman to do so. On March 28, 1997, the first ever recorded women's MMA bout in the United States took place. The event was held in Hogansburg, New York at International Fighting Championship 4. The fight only lasted a minute and 44 seconds before Becky the Specimen Levi defeated Betty Fagan by TKO. Levi would finish her four-year fighting career with a 7-1 record. So our winner is Becky Levi! Her only loss came in the second ever women's MMA tournament titled Remix World Cup 2000 run by Japanese promotion Neo Women's Pro Wrestling. She lost to fellow pioneer Marlos Conan, who was 19 at the time and entered the tournament just days beforehand. Gondorenko was also competing in the tournament and almost faced Conan in the finals before coming up short against Megumi Yabushida. Marlos would go on to win the tournament, defeating three opponents in one night just like her predecessor, becoming the second woman to do so. During this time, Japan played a key role in women's MMA, and Smackerel was the only all-female organization to continuously hold events. The first elite female Japanese fighter was the ballet Tudo queen, Yaka Suji. From 2001 to 2009, Suji posted a 22-1 record and even managed to avenge her one loss in that stretch. Following shortly after was Megumi Fuji, a BJJ and Sambo practitioner who made her MMA debut at the age of 30. Fuji is widely credited with helping change the perception of women in mixed martial arts. She's quoted as telling her students, we need to be well trained in order not to be looked down at by males. Fuji went on to have a 26-3 record, with the only losses coming to Zoyola Grigel and Jessica Aguilar. The mid-2000s would produce more great Japanese talent. Women like Hisei Wananabe, Satako Shinashi, and Miko Matsumoto. American fighter Tara La Rosa would also start a rise, eventually becoming the first and only women's bantamweight champion of Bodog Fight. The position that I've worked up to now has really put me more at the forefront of the sport for women. Tara is one of the most exciting fighters out there, including with the man. <laughs> she comes to fight, Tara comes to fight. I feel the responsibility to work as hard as I possibly can and represent the rest of the women and myself in a really positive way. Early on, Japan was huge for the growth of women's MMA. However, around that time, not everyone was okay with women fighting. In 2004, Japanese lightweight Takumi Yano pulled out of a Pankers event simply because he refused to fight on the same card as a woman. Also, promotions would often have a limited rule set, with a time limit of 30 seconds for groundwork or prohibiting ground strikes altogether. These rules would get changed in 2007. However, the decade of limitations stunted the growth of women's MMA early on. Meanwhile, in America, women's mixed martial arts would start to find a bigger audience, largely because of Scott Coker and Strikeforce. On December 8, 2006, Strikeforce promoted their first women's MMA bout, when an undefeated Gina Serrano took on Elena Maxwell. Serrano won by unanimous decision and decided to spend the next two years in promotion to lead XC. During her time there, she continued to win and became the face of women's MMA. Meanwhile, another young and exciting prospect was making a name for herself as well. That woman was Chris Cyborg. Her speed, power, and physicality were unlike anything in women's MMA, a statement that still holds true to this day. In 2009, Strikeforce would purchase the assets to Elite XC, obtaining the contract rights to both Serrano and Cyborg. On August 15th of that same year, Strikeforce matched up the two prospects and became the first MMA organization to host a women's main event. Cyborg would win the fight by TKO at the end of the first round and went on to become one of the most dominant fighters of all time. Strikeforce Serrano vs. Cyborg was a huge moment for women's MMA and averaged over half a million viewers on Showtime. The contest was also the first women's championship to feature five five-minute rounds as to be on par with the men. We just passed the anniversary of you fighting Gina Carano. That was the fight where they did allow full rounds for women. Um, how does it be, how, you know, sort of feel to be a part of history and, and you know, being a, sort of a landmark fight in the change of having the, you know, the fights longer for women in MMA? You know, for me, the, the goal I always have in my career and my life is like to do the best in the women's MMA for the other girls come. For me, when I'm stop fighting, I want my legacy continue of another girls. You know, this is this is the legacy thing, you know, when I start fighting, 
now have a lot of girls fighting and now you see so many girls for me it's, it's, it's amazing i want to continue doing this bring the light from other girls with the sport increasing in popularity the end of the decade saw other great female fighters rise to the ranks as well women like sarah kaufman alexis davis julia budd jermaine durandamy and current go to women's mma amanda nunez in 2011, the infamous video of Dana White being asked about women fighting in the UFC started to make its rounds on the internet. When are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. Never? Never. Never. <laughs> Roughly two months after that moment, Zuba announced they bought Strikeforce and will continue to run the promotion separately from the UFC. It was around this time that the rowdy one would begin her meteoric rise to superstardom. When Ronda Rousey burst onto the MMA scene, she was a phenom and the first American woman to earn an Olympic medal in judo. She finished her first four professional fights by armbar, each lasting under a minute. <laughs> In just her fifth fight, she took on Strikeforce bantamweight champ Misha Tate. Rousey again won by armbar in the first round, breaking Tate's arm and becoming the new face of women's MMA in the process. Shortly after, Janet Martin and Shannon Knapp would establish the first all-female MMA promotion in the United States, titled Invicta Fighting Championships. Since Dana White was so outspoken about women fighting in the UFC, the female athletes felt unsure about their future in Strikeforce. Because of this, Martin and Nat felt obligated to use their knowledge and provide a stable home for female fighters. On April 28, 2012, another milestone in women's MMA took place when Invicta held their first event. The sport has developed so much that there is a place where we have a cage of our own. And I think it's really good to have a lineup with all females because then you have a variety of girls we all look different we all have a different background i'm from europe the other girl girls can be from france or girls from everywhere in the united states one is a mom the other is a student and uh, i think a lot of girls can relate to that and that's why i think it's such an important thing later in 2012 news broke that strike force would be dissolved and dana white announced that the ufc had signed her first ever female fighter in ronda rousey since she was the final bantamweight champion of strike force her belt was promoted and she became the inaugural women's ufc bantamweight champion i'm gonna make it official right now the first ever ufc women's champion ronda rousey <laughs> And I'm presenting her with her belt, and I'm announcing her fight in the UFC, February 23rd at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. She'll be fighting Liz Carmouche, and she is the main event. Ronda would once again win by armbar in the first round, gaining her first title defense and becoming one of the biggest stars the sport has ever seen. This moment opened the floodgates, and before you knew it, every major promotion had women fighting in their organization. However, it was the UFC who was leading the way when it came to promoting women in mixed martial arts. 2014 saw the UFC create a 115-pound strawweight division and the first all-female season of Ultimate Fighter. We decided to bring in the 115-pound women's division. Look at this! There's a show called Invicta, and basically it's all-female fighters. Are you kidding me? So what we did is we went in and acquired 11 of the 115-pound women fighters from Invicta, Eight of them will compete here on The Ultimate Fighter. In the finals, it came down to the cookie monster Carla Esparza versus Thug Rose Namajunas. Esparza would win the fight by rear naked choke in the third round and became the inaugural UFC strawweight champion. In her first title defense, she lost her belt to Muay Thai and kickboxing specialist Yawana Yanjacek. Yawana would become the first long-standing champion of the strawweight division, gaining five title defenses before losing to Rose Namajunas. Rose would go on to beat Ioana twice and is the current strawweight champion with some considering her to be the best in the world. On November 14, 2015, Ronda fought former kickboxer Holly Holm at UFC 193 and was famously knocked out by a head kick in the second round. The belt then switched hands to Misha Tate and then once again to the lioness Amanda Nunes. Ronda would be her first title defense and they fought at UFC 207 on December 30, 2016. Amanda would dominate the fight and won by TKO in the first minute of the contest. With the win, a passing of the guard moment took place and Amanda Nunes became the new face of women's MMA. In 2017, two more weight classes were added to the UFC in the form of a women's featherweight and flyweight division. On February 11th, Jermaine Durandamy defeated Holly Holm at UFC 208 to become the inaugural featherweight champion. On December 1st, Nico Montano defeated Roxanne Matafari at the finale of Season 26 of The Ultimate Fighter and became the inaugural strawweight champion. Oddly enough, both women would be stripped of their belts before defending them. Durandamy was reportedly stripped because of her unwillingness to face Cyborg as her first title defense. Cyborg then won the vacant title and was subsequently defeated by Amanda Nunez who became the first ever women's two division champion.
Montagna was reportedly stripped for a similar reason, with speculation that she was unwilling to face number one contender, the bullet Valentina Shevchenko. Though in Montagna's case, she had a signed bout agreement to fight Shevchenko at UFC 228, but was unable to make the walk due to weight cutting issues the day before the fight. Shevchenko then went on to become the women's flyweight champion and has defended her belt five times so far. Both Shevchenko and Nunez are considered by many to be the two most complete female mixed martial artists in the history of the sport. So far they fought each other twice, with Amanda coming out on top both times, although many feel Valentina won their second contest. With both women being so dominant, the possibility of a third fight is still there, and could possibly happen sooner rather than later. You, you get asked this a lot, but some of us feel like the only real test left for you is that trilogy fight with Amanda Nunes, and do you foresee that happening at any point, and would you be going up to 135 for that, if so? I know it's gonna happen. I don't see it rushing, because I want to, um, like, the perfect timing. That's why when it's happened, and it's gonna happen, it's gonna be a huge deal. Now virtually every major MMA promotion has women's divisions, and the next female superstar could emerge from anywhere. Recently, current PFL standouts and Olympic gold medalists Kayla Harrison and Clarissa Shields have been staking the biggest claims. Harrison is a judoka who competed at the 2012 and 2016 Olympics, winning gold in both and becoming the first American to do so in judo. Shields is a boxer who also competed at the 2012 and 2016 Olympics, winning gold in both and becoming the first American to do so in boxing. The early women's pioneers had to fight just to gain acceptance in a male-dominated sport. Now some of MMA's biggest stars are women, and it would be hard to imagine the sport without them. The evolution of women in this sport has come a long way, and let us never forget the pioneers and the moments that got us here. As always, I posted some related material in the description for those interested. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below with the topic you'd like to hear me cover in a future episode. Again, don't forget to follow the channel on social media, and the link to my merch shop is in the description below. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. Just to do whatever we can to take the word woman out of it. I don't hear the, everyone saying men's this, men's that, the men's press conference. People aren't here today because they love women, it's because they love fighters. We're fighters. It's not the women's UFC bantamweight, it's not the women's UFC strawweight. I'm the bantamweight champion, she's the strawweight champion, and these people are here because they love fights. Sometimes these things happen in MMA.